Hey everybody. In this video, I'm going to be wrapping this fossil for the lady who gave me this camera over here that you can see me waving on. Um, <laughs> so I'm really excited to get to work on this piece. Um, I didn't get a whole lot of like specifications about how they wanted this piece wrapped other than um, it is for her son. There is a lot of a uh, backstory through this and it has really significant meaning. So I want to make it really, really nice for her and him. <laughs> Not just to show my gratitude, but to celebrate their successes together. So I'm using some 18 gauge Parawire that I get from Parawire.com. It's www.parawire.com and if I remember to, I'll put it down in the links, but y'all know me. I'm horrible at remembering to do links and stuff. And I'm also using, just to give it some different um, depths and colors, I'm using some hematite um, 18 gauge as well, which is a much deeper, darker, almost black um, wire. It definitely, it suits its name. It looks like hematite, which I think is beautiful. So. And I'm going to start with at least three pieces of core wire. <clears throat> Let me set those out of the way. Kind of get the curve out of it. <clears throat> and I'm also using 26 gauge um, silver plated silver para wire. Still waking up a little bit <laughs> this morning. So hopefully as the video progresses we'll get better and better lighting. I'm going to start with two arm spans worth of wire because just because I'm decent at adding in more wire doesn't mean I like doing it. <laughs> And it can be quite a tangled mess sometimes. So what I want to do is I'm just going to kind of gently with my fingers ease out that coiling. I mean, it's still springy, but not nearly so bad as what it was. Try to avoid dipping the wire into my coffee. <laughs> Y'all would be surprised at how many of my pieces I've accidentally christened in my coffee. <laughs> Now I'm going to line the ends up, just like that, and I'm going to find the center of the wire. Now the technique that I'm going to be doing here um, is from one of Lisa Barth's books, I think it's Timeless Weaving, she calls it a snake weave. Yeah, I think that's going to be what I do. Um, so I'm going to start just right here around the wire and wrap three times. Now I, I'm not going to show, like I'm going to fast forward through this because I want y'all to go buy her book and learn everything that you can from her. So that's how I'm getting it started and then I'm going to be moving it all the way down and I'm going to do, let's figure out what the diameter of this pendant is first. So I have a nice little piece of scrap wire. So I want to do about this much, all uh, woven up in this snake weave by Lisa Barth. So I'm going to go do that, and then I'll meet y'all right back here. Okay. <clears throat> so you can see here, we have a little bit of this snake weed done, which I think is looking really cool. And sorry for the loud noise, it's raining right now. I mean, it's a beautiful spring day, but it is just torrential downpour. And so you can see I have about the length of the pendant 
in um, snake snake weave snake chain. And let me find the ruler real quick. Because I'd like to be able to give you all the measurements of this piece. Um, it looks to be at its broadest point, 30 millimeters across the shoulders and 45 millimeters in length. Okay, and I want to do something across the bottom that will kind of encapsulate it. So you can see we've come off of the uh, snake chain here, or snake weave, sorry. And I'm going to kind of tuck this weaving wire off to the side. And I'm going to split this just a bit. And I'm going to start coiling just on either side. One, two, And so you can see how that starts to kind of branch off. And I'm going to need to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm actually just going to flip it over. <laughs> Trying to keep my wires all as nice and snug to each other is what I can get them. So now you can see here, one more, <laughs> sorry, I want it to be nice and even. Looks like we're going to get some thunder today too. Okay, so you can see here, it's starting to, um, how it's starting to come out. And I'm going to continue this down, because the idea is, is I want it Oops, to go across the bottom to kind of encapsulate and hold this trilobite very securely. So I'm going to want it about maybe an inch across. So I'm going to continue weaving probably off camera um, just to keep this tutorial at a manageable size until I get to about here on each side and then I'll meet y'all right back here. Okay so here you can see um, how the wires have come down and it is my goal to come back into the snake weave and so to do that I'm going to flip this over zoom out a bit and oh, the <laughs> it's not wire wrapping unless you're wrestling with the wires Oh. Okay, so I have one wire coming off to my right and one wire coming off to my left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to wrap it around the side and then the middle. And I'm going to try to keep that as nice and snug to the previous wrapping as possible. So you can see how that joined together. And now on this one, I'm going to take this wire that's coming off the side here, and I'm going to wrap it around this side in the middle. Again, keeping it as pushed snugly down to the previous wrapping as possible. And then whenever you, whenever you exit, you're going to have them going away from the center. 
and the wrapping wires are actually in between, or the core wires, sorry, are actually between the uh, wrapping wires and me. So these are coming around on the back, if that makes sense. I hope that it does. <clears throat> and so now I'm going to continue doing this repetition, keeping everything as nice and snug as I can. just one time on each side until I've reached the same length as the other side. Because I, I don't know yet if I want a ton of symmetry in this piece or not, but at this stage it's good to at least give myself that option, I think. <laughs> and it can really help to have a very slight spread going on between your core wires. That way you're not having to constantly tangle and untangle them from each other just to get your weaving wire around. Okay. So I'm going to keep doing this. I'll see y'all back here. Okay, so here you can see we've gotten just a little under our goal by like maybe a centimeter on each end. But I really like the way this is coming out so far. And I wanted to see how it shapes up. So I'm just going to use this rounded tool. This is actually a, an edge slicker that I use for um, my leather working. But it was right here and it's a pretty good shape for it. So I'm just pressing it on and kind of shaping it around. Get a very rough dimension of how this trilobite is shaped. Oh, that's pretty nice. That fits it pretty snug actually. <laughs> um, so from here, I do want a little bit of a rotation put on this. So on this top part, I'm going to come up and I just want it to kind of just like that. So then on this one, I'm going to just like that, a little less of a, uh, of a twist or a movement wave. I don't know. <laughs> Words are hard. Um, so just like that. And now I can take these side pieces and turn them so that um, I really want to show off all that weaving that we did. And now I'm going to bring this one around like that. Okay. And now I'm actually going to remove the trolley bike because you can see this is quite thin. Um, the lady, uh, who I'm making this for actually, she told me about how she carved and like kind of birthed this from the stone that it was fossilized in. And so I want to be very, very careful with it. Okay. I'm going to give it a little bit of an offset like that. That way these wires are out of the way of these ones. <clears throat> and... I think I'm going to do another weave. I'm just not sure which one yet. And so I think what I'm going to do... Okay, is um, <clears throat> I'm going to bring this one around from behind because I like to weave in this direction. <laughs> I like having these two cameras set up. Um behind it just like that and then I'm going to wrap twice around one wire so there's one 
two. And then I'm going to wrap twice around two wires. So there's one, two. Press it down in my thumbnail just like that. And now twice around one. So there's one, two. I'm actually going to do three. I think I'm going to do a three, two. Just because. <laughs> there's one. And two, and then one, two, three. <clears throat> yeah, I think I like that okay. And then one, <clears throat> And I'm going to continue to do this for the remainder of this wire, which is about a hand's length. Um, so again, that's the weave that we're doing. So I'll be right back as soon as I get that woven, you guys. Okay, so um, I've started to run out of wire. I've only come about this far. And I've decided decided to kind of mix it up a bit because I really want to show off more of this hematite wire that um, I think will really like be a nice accent to the nice deep dark slate color of the uh, fossil. So I'm just wrapping off the rest of my remaining wire here, kind of smooshing it down, grabbing my bent nose pliers, smooshing that down. <laughs> Just like that. And so now I'm going to pull off just an arm length of the, um, if I can find the end of it, of my 26 gauge silver plated silver hair wire. Kind of snip that off. Sorry for all the traffic noises. We live on Old Route 66 or like very near it, so we get a lot of um, motorcycles through, just just herds of them <laughs> coming through. And uh, they are not the quietest bikes. Um, so, so now here we are. We've got, I was wrapping around the hematite wire, now I'm gonna be wrapping around the silver. So I'm just gonna grip it here like this. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. That's a pretty good start. I'm smushing it down in my fingernails. And then I'm going to just train this tail down um, with my fingers. Smush. Um, and that last little bit right there, I'm going to get with my bent nose pliers. And I'm just, I'm holding this end stable with my fingers so that it doesn't just twist all over the place. I think the best time to always um, keep your wire ends, like some people will go through at the very end of a project and touch up all their wire ends. I try to touch them up as I go because you never know where one's going to end up. There we go. Yeah, that's nice and smooth. So now I'm going to push that down all the way to right there. Oh, this is looking like a tangled mess. It's because it is a tangled mess. <laughs> okay. So I need to come out just a little further. So I'm going to bring this back down to the end just because I find it's easier to work there. And then I'm going to push this down. And so that they're about the same length. And then I'm going to bring them back together. 
and then I'm going to wrap twice. So there's one, two around both um, wires. And now I'm going to wrap three times just around the silver. So actually, I'll flip this over. I can take all of this mess right here and just bend it away from me. <laughs> that way I'm not tangling it on every little thing that I do. So there's one, two, three, just like that. And then two around both. One, two, and then one, two, three. Um, and so you can see here, this is really going to show off the hematite core wire much better than, um, I mean, this was nice further back, but it looks all very monotonously silver. And since this is a non-tarnished wire, I wanted to like show off a little bit more depth. Ideally, instead of using the silver plated silver, I'd have been using the silver plated titanium because it's more of a halfway point between the very dark hematite and the very bright silver. But I'm all out. So <laughs> this is what we're working with. So there's one, two, two weaves around both, and then one, two, three. I need to take all y'all's advice and put some like liquid skin or mole skin or something right there because it's really starting to get sore. But that's part of it. If your hands start hurting, just be patient with yourself. Two, three. Okay, so now I'm going to continue this down to probably an inch, maybe an inch and a half away from the end. So I'll meet you all back here shortly. So I'm working on coiling some wire for an additional piece to come into this one. And I wanted to show you guys some different troubleshooting because there's a lot that, surprisingly, there's a lot that can go on, um, go wrong whenever you're coiling. Um, and that's something, one of the main ones that I, I see myself do is I'll get started into coiling again, and I'm doing this number. And I notice, you know, the spacing on that is a little wonky, and so I'll push it down. But then that gives me a little bit of a bubbling, like an inconsistency in the weaving. Will that focus? I wonder. There it goes. So you can see right there, it has a little bit of bubbling. And I mean, one isn't that bad, but this can kind of happen a lot. So what I do is I come in with my bent nose pliers and, okay. I just take it and twisting in the same direction as what I would be wrapping the wire. I just kind of flatten that down. And so that's how I fix that. And then also, you can see here, I work very close towards the tip of my wire, but on this whole piece, like I need to keep kind of scooting it down and that gets harder and harder to do as you go. So what I do is I grip my core wire and then I'll kind of just pull and pet my hand down the whole length. And I mean, it gets it just a little at a time, but it's almost like it stretches it, and then whenever I go back, it contracts it down. And that way, that opens me up a lot more space to um, do my coiling. So again, I just weave some, or coil some, and smoosh it down. And I find it doesn't really bother it so much so long as whenever you start, you go ahead and keep, you, like try to get a nice tight coiling right from the start of whenever you start back up. Um, I think that'll be really helpful. Now that doesn't always happen though, which is why I do this troubleshooting to show you all the tricks and techniques that I've learned over the years. So I'm gonna keep, um, and of coiling this, 
just nice and fast if I can. And you'll see it usually also gets a tendency to want to bunch up on itself. Don't hesitate to go back in there and um, straighten your wire out. Also, this is another time, another way that the wire can get to messing up on you. Will you focus for me? No. There we go. You can see it's kind of layered back on itself. So what we're going to do there is you just kind of unwrap it. It's a little wonky, so you can straighten that out with your fingernail. And then just start coiling again. And then you can try pushing it back and it Z's. That's okay. Just again, be patient with yourself. Don't panic. You just kind of anything, set it down, step back, and then come back to it. So now I'm going to scooch this down somewhere because I really want to fit the rest of this wire because this finished off a spool for me. And what I'm doing here is I'm wrapping an 18 gauge core wire um, with 24 gauge titanium uh, toned copper core para wire. So it's silver plated copper that's been covered in a titanium colored I don't know, it's complicated. <laughs> it's pretty though, and I like it, and that's what matters. So I'm going to keep coiling. I've had a lot of folks recommend to me to use a coiling gizmo, and I'll actually be using one of those here in a minute, but my 18 gauge wire is still about half as thick um, as the thinnest gauged mandrel that they provide in the... Um, in the coiling gizmo kit and I have the one that has like at least five different sized mandrels like it has quite a few um, getting to the end here So whenever it gets to where I don't quite have enough to hold on to with my hand, I just start twisting it around like this. I'm going to push it down in my fingers, and then I come back in with my bent nose pliers and try to touch up and make sure that my coil finishes off strong. Okay, so there we go. We have a nice long length of that. Um, before I do anything else with that, though, I wanted to show you guys. This is where we left off on the pendant. Um, so you can see we got a good length of this two around two, three around one rotation showing off the uh, hematite wire. And this is being wrapped with a 26 gauge silver pair wire. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is um, I've wrapped the three around here. And I'm going to wrap one, two around both. And then I'm going to come in between the silver and the hematite wires. And I'm going to start wrapping just around the hematite. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of a spread here. And you can or orient the, um, the core wires however is most comfortable for you. Three, four, five, six. And I'm just going to start coiling down. Now I want to zoom out and show you guys um, how I start to hold it. It's almost like crochet <laughs> whenever this part of my finger gets too sore. I just start working on another part of my hand.
and again I'm going to come in with my bent nose pliers and just kind of cinch it all down. Okay, I'm going to see if I can't scooch everything else out of the way and do my favorite way of coiling wire and that is, I'll show you all on the other screen, <laughs> just spinning it. I kind of keep my face away though so that um, any flying wires don't come and get me. <laughs> but it gets it nice and spaced out, but you can just compact that back down. And that got it out far enough that I can now comfortably coil it by hand the way I usually do. And I'm just going to continue coiling down until this is completely used up. There we go. And I'm going to finish it off with my fingers like this. And this is another reason why I don't use a coiling gizmo for a lot of my work. And that's because if I were to come in here, there's no way that I could have attached this to the coiling gizmo. At least that I've been able to figure out in a way that gives it such a nice, clean, smooth transition. <clears throat> and so if you are new to wire wrapping um, or wanting to go from wire wrapping into wire weaving, I would recommend instead of investing in the tool, the coiling gizmo, I would invest in some wires so that you can get good at doing this by hand because I would always prefer to have the skill for even if I don't have the tool. Um, whereas if you get to where you don't have the tool and you're like, ah, I can't do that though. Um, and it's always better to have the skill set, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna set this off to the side. And speaking of the coiling gizmo, I'm going to try to dig mine out. If I know what I did with it, there it is. So here you can see, my coiling gizmo. Um, I'm just going to clamp this down on my table right here. And I'm going to angle this camera up so that y'all can see. And I want to make a double coil. So I'm going to dig out again. This is the thinnest mandrel, and this is the 18 gauge wire. So you can see very slightly there the difference in thickness. My 18 gauge is still so much thinner. So I'm going to thread that through, and this is 18 gauge hematite pair of wire. I want to come in between it with 20 gauge pair of wire in silver touch. And so I'm going to set that back off to the side. The way that I'm going to attach this is I'm just coming to the head of my uh, <clears throat> mandrel and I'm going to do just a little fold because I don't want to use up too much of this wire because um, I'm going to need some of it to uh, kind of incorporate my pieces together I think okay. so they're just wrapped around like that remove my hair <laughs> Okay, I'm going to bring both of these wires off to the side here, and now I'm going to start coiling. And I want to keep a nice tight coil. And I want to keep the wires in line with each other. <clears throat> so 
so you can kind of see how that works. And I'm using my finger as a guide. And I think that is all I would like of the coiled wire. So now I'm going to come through, I'm going to pull this off the mandrel, or rather I'm going to pull the mandrel off of the uh, guide, and I'm just going to hand wrap a few times, get five rotations, give or take, and I'm going to smush that down, giving me a nice little finished end, and I'm going to snip with my wire snips and while this is still on the um, mandrel I am going to use my nylon or my bent nose pliers to kind of cinch it down just a little bit and so now I'm going to come in here on the end and open up these pliers I don't want to just chop them off right now because I'm going to try to do something with them. So these ones, and I can scooch it down our mandrel a little bit. Let's see. Oops. Pokey wire. <laughs> I'm going to try to... As best I can, coil them around the core as well. And now I'm going to snip the wire. <clears throat> and again, get those ends nice and tucked. Then I can actually grip it with my pliers there and just compress it all down a little bit more. There we go. And so now I'm going to slide this off of the mandrel. And be very gentle with it because I don't want to knock these coils out of alignment with each other. Um, and I'm going to come through with some more 18 gauge hematite in a pretty generous length. Because um, again, I'd rather give myself way more than what I need than um, cut myself short and just to keep it from getting messed up, I'm going to go ahead and thread through that whole coil. Okay. I feel better now. <laughs> I'm going to put my clamp away. Put all these mandrels away. Oops. So yeah, especially for, I love these mandrels, especially for coiling like the 20 gauge. Um, like really thick stuff that's just brutal on your hands. Okay. Angle this back down. And let's see. That's pretty neat. That's the first time I've done this. I've seen it in a lot of other people's work, but um, I really wanted to try it on my own. And this this piece really calls for something with that kind of layer and depth in it. Pokey ends of wire are pokey. Okay. So now we can slide our um, trilobite fossil. And I think I'd really like this piece framing the side here. I think that'll look pretty neat. But we can add that in in a little bit. Because right now I want to get this long piece here. I don't know if I just want to coil it or if I want to 
this is a perfect opportunity to add in this wire. You see how they kind of set. So I'm going to do maybe five wraps around just this one hematite wire. Do I want to add in that end? Or do I want to add in this end? That has, <coughs> excuse me, some other stuff coming off of it. I think I want to add in the plain end. So now from here, I'm going to take this, and I think I want to do a figure eight weave. Because that will let me fill that gap nicely. And if this isn't a tangle of wire, then I, I don't know what is. <laughs> There's just ends of wire everywhere. <laughs> Ready to. And one, two. And so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Maybe. Um, let's see if I can't demonstrate this real quick. So I've come in between the wires and I'm going to wrap one, two, and come up in between the wires and then from the top to bottom go one up in between. And the difference of what's happening here is I'm not wrapping around the outside of the wires, which would give me an effect like that. I'm wrapping by coming up in between. It really is doing this um, figure eight around the wires. And you can do just one rotation, one rotation around each core wire, but um, I find it makes it a lot more stable if you do at least two. But I really encourage you to try your own experimentation, find out for yourself, because you might have different results than I did, and you might also prefer the way that it looks more than I prefer it. I prefer the two weave or more. Um, but that's just me. One, two. Come up in between them. And another reason why I really, really, really enjoy this weave, one, two, is you can actually start to splay them apart like that and open this weave up. Now, granted, the more you open it, the more wire it's going to use as it comes across, but that's just something to keep in mind. One, two. finger hurts so bad. <laughs> but I'm really going to try to get done with this piece so I can mail it this afternoon. So we'll see how that goes. It's good to have goals, right? <laughs> One, two. 
And so with this piece, um, like what I'm doing right here, I'm hoping to kind of put a little bit of an expansion into the weaving. That way, as the wire travels around, Um, you can see how it's making that very slight expansion. And I love how this one right here just butts up right to it. So nice. Okay. And so what's going to be happening here at the front is, um... the bite in so that you can see what's going on. Um, I want these wires to kind of come across the back and then I want these ones to kind of come up and sweep around like this is going to be the bale. Both of these wires are. Um, and so to accomplish that I want just a little bit of a widening and then taper it back down again because um, I don't want the bale to be too high on it. Let's keep whapping, whapping. keep whapping. <laughs> Sorry, I did not mean to go off camera, which is why I set up the other one so that at least y'all can still see ish what I'm doing, if not it completely being zoomed in. But I found out very quickly that um, the way that is most comfortable for me to wrap is not necessarily the way that is the best presentation for teaching how to wrap. So. Trying to find a, a nice balance between both worlds. So you can see how that's coming together. Now I think I'm going to start bringing it back in, so to do that I'm just going to kind of put a slight curve in towards each other on both sides of our wire. starting to run out here and that's getting kind of difficult to work with. <clears throat> I'm going to find my 26 gauge wire. Silver plated silver. I'm going to do another arm span. Snip that off. Straighten this wire out a little bit to get some of those, um, some of that springiness out of it from where it was on the spool. So let's see here. 
So I'm going to add in wire. How do I want to do this? Um, so it would have come around from on top to below. So you can see right now I, have, I haven't really bound off this way before. So I'm just kind of starting in where I would have left off with some loose wires hanging about. Hoping that maybe this won't work out horribly. One, two. And come around from underneath. Keep that other tail out of the way. And one. And two. Okay. I'm going to do one more before I start snipping and stabilizing. So this one right here, I do feel comfortable. I can go ahead and snip. And then get in there with my fine tip, bent nose pliers. I'm just kind of smush that down. And then right here, I'm gonna come in and snip. And again, smoosh down with my fine tip flyers. So it gives us a little bit of inconsistent spacing, but at least more wires added in. give it a little bit of a sharper bend. I want to go ahead and get this contracted down. And you can see whenever I'm on the redo, like the, uh, like contracting down, I guess, um, contraction. Yeah. Cause expansion and contraction. Um, whenever, <laughs> sorry, words are so hard. Um, I hold it in place with my finger and that keeps it from sliding down the wire. A really nice cool breeze too. Because it does just wanna the wire just wants to slip everywhere. Um whenever you're bringing it back down. One two. And so just be patient, take it slow. One two. That's how it's coming along. Pretty pleased with that. Oh, it's getting so close, guys. Because this is, of all things in wire wrapping, the decrease of the figure eight weave is like the most challenging thing for me. So, it is, and it's because I'm not patient. Not at all, but we have to be sometimes. Oops, sorry. 
I'm going to zoom back out for you guys. I think you're getting the idea. So there we go. You can still kind of see what's going on. so close okay so now here you can see we've gotten back down I'm going to now split these to make them a little bit more parallel instead of perpendicular instead of crossing each other they're going alongside each other um, and now I'm going to resume our figure eight weave just cinching it down as much as I can, push it with my fingernail. I'm going to do a couple more rotations of this. Okay. Now I'm going to try to get this wire to be a little more in line with it, so I'm kind of just <laughs> bumping and curving it along. <laughs> That's actually a cool idea. Okay, so now I'm going to wrap one, two, just like I had continued the figure eight. I'm going to do one more rotation because I want to show you guys what's going on here in my mind. Is right here where I started joining it. I want to thread this weaving wire through and stabilize these wires against each other. Um, I think that'll be a good thing. Okay. So I'm going to find my end. And I'm going to try my best to just cram it. Up through... Ha ha! Success. And as I pull through, I want to make sure that this wire is not going to kink up on itself the way it always wants to. And then I'm going to cinch it in nice and tight. Ooh, I'm so proud of me just now. And in, as opposed to wrapping around from above, I want that wire to be hidden. So I'm going to continue that figure eight patterning. So it's tucked kind of down in between those two wires. And now I'm just gonna continue. One, two, and then coming up from below. One, two, and there we are. Excellent. And so now, those wires are secured together. Yes. So pleased with that. Whew. Okay, coffee break. <laughs> That's intense, guys. And it's like, for me, it's first thing in the morning right now. So I'm like, waking up. <laughs> Okay, so let's see.
because I'm going to wait to continue this weave around until I decide a little more what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to place the trilobite one more time. And I think I want it a little more off-center as opposed to perfectly centered. this wrap around. That might be cool. So I'm just going to take these three wires from the snake weave that's going around the back and I'm just going to wrap it like that. Sometimes it doesn't have to be as complicated as you think it should. <laughs> yep, that totally worked. Right on. Okay. <laughs> now that's still not the prettiest thing I've ever done in my whole wide life, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find a pen or a mandrel if you're fancy. Um, and I'm going to put it right here and I'm going to bring this down and I want it to be in line with the spine of the trilobite to get it to look kind of nice and centered. And so now from there, I'm going to kind of tuck that in behind, maybe. Placing the mandrel to keep this nice and open. Okay. And again, I, I do want to keep this in line with the spine of the trilobite, because it is important to me to have a sense of like cont continuity and centeredness. Um, in this wire pattern. Kind of bring in some of those wires off to the side. And also this is coming across the back here. So I'm going to see about bringing this up into the front. And maybe, again, placing that mandrel, you want to keep everything nice and um, even. Bring that wire work off to the side, right there. Maybe do a bit of a twist, because I like a twist. And I want this kind of flattened out a little bit. It has such a tendency to pucker on itself. I want to keep it nice and flat. do that, I'm going to take my nylon gel pliers and use them to kind of flatten and cinch around. You can see what I'm doing there. And it still has such a tendency to want to like vortex in on itself. So I'm just taking it and kind of twisting. It's like, I will make it lay flat. <laughs> I just want to do it as cleanly as possible. So then there, that comes around. And back off to the side. And now, let's see, where'd that 26 gauge wire go? I guess I put it away. Um, I'm gonna use just a bit 
of the 26 gauge or an iron span just because who knows what will happen. <laughs> And here I have a little tray of some four millimeter squares and some six millimeter round hematite beads. And I'm going to bring this bead to the halfway point of my wire, just like that. And I'm gonna try to keep the wire bent symmetrically on both sides, just like that. have both ends here and I'm going to feed them through the center of this spiral. Pull that down nicely and now we have a little hematite bead just incorporated there. I hope she won't mind that but I really wanted something to help fill that hole <laughs> that had formed. I think it's pretty nice. Hopefully she'll like it. Okay, so now I feel like I can take the mandrel out. Um, and this wire that I pulled the bead through on, I am going to take one of the sides and coil it around this section here of wire. And so you can see on the back side, trying to keep a pretty nice tight coil. Because it is a goal with this piece to get it to look just as nice from the back as it does from the front. But sometimes that can be a challenge because especially when you've got a lot of different wires going a lot of different which ways, um, you got to hide them somewhere. <laughs> and the back is usually the place that that happens. So coiling on that side. I'm going to set that wire aside and then on the other end of the wire that's stabilizing this hematite, I'm going to coil around this wire. And again, trying my best to have a nice, um, clean, even coiling. Doesn't always happen, but doesn't mean we can't work towards it. Says the train. Um, beep. You know, that's not a bad idea. My wire keeps accidentally wrapping around this, um, 18 gauge silver here in the center. And so I think what I might do is when I break it out far enough, um, because I'm going to wrap around both. Mm, or should I do a figure eight weave with a nice, like, widening? I think I'm going to do a figure eight weave with just the widening. <laughs> I don't want that one part in the bale to be the only part that has that um, figure eight pattern. Okay. Sorry, I know I'm off camera, but that's why I have this one right here. <laughs> okay. So there's one, two. Okay, so from here guys, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to continue this widening um, and I'm going to coil this whole section. So I'm going to do that and I'll meet you all right back here. Okay, so I'm back. I had to let my camera battery charge up a little bit, but um, <clears throat> we've coiled up this whole piece 
and I've started doing a little bit of an expansion on this figure eight weave in that I'm doing two weaves on this side and then I come around and I'm doing one, two, three weaves on this side. And so that's just giving me a little bit more growth on one side than on the other. Now I'm going to go ahead and step it up to four. And I've been doing it for the three, two, three on one side, two on the other for about maybe a quarter of an inch now. So I'm going to step it up to four. And there's one, two, and then one, two, three, four, and one, two. And again, you'll notice the wire has a tendency to want to climb back up the core wire. Got a little cow, a little blister already. Um, one, two, three, four. And so to resist that, I am using my fingers to very firmly hold the wire in place as best as I can. Okay, and now from here, I'm just going to finish off coiling it just with my fingers. <laughs> It finally stopped raining, and I think it's going to prove to be a very beautiful day today. It makes me really glad I got the grass mowed yesterday, though, because it, I mean, probably going to need to mowed again tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so you can see that little bit of a swoosh, swoosh that it gives the, um, the wire. And it's getting to a point where if I don't be careful and keep my trilobite in the setting, then pretty soon I'm not going to be able to get it back in. So I'm going to try to keep him nice and secure in his wrapping. Um, push this up. Oh, we're going to get some sunlight now too. <laughs> and... <clears throat> I want this guy that we just finished to wrap around to this side just a little bit. And I'm going to take my roundness pliers <clears throat> and grab as close to the tip of the pliers and the tip of the wire as I can. And I want to start just swirling it in off to this side. And you can see where I touched it with my pliers, it kind of split the wire. Right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in there with my fingernails and kind of redistribute that to make it look nice and even. There we go. And now for this one right here, <clears throat> I don't want this just finishing right there. So I think I'm going to dig out some little little silver beads if I can. Beads, what would I have done with me? There they are. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> I have the cell phone, I kid you not, hanging on the back of my music stand that I've had since like fifth grade because I can't find our other tripod. <laughs> so, um, faking it till I make it every time. <laughs> So now I'm going to use just a little bit of, let's see, I've got this wire coming off the back side. Hmm. 
So I think I might thread this through to the front. Just holding on across there. And I'm going to coil and I'm going to try to cinch this down as best as I can so I want everything nice and tight I'm going to go, that's one so there's two three let's do five four might be a little easier if I pull the wire out towards me. And then I'm going to find a little bead that will fit on there. <clears throat> and then I'm going to wrap around. You know, these wires not wanting to um, settle down. There we go. <clears throat> so I've added a bead and now I'm going to coil around it one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to find a bead if I can. There we go. There's two beads that'll work. Because it can be difficult to find a very small bead that uh, will still fit on the 18 gauge wire. There's one, two, three, four, five. Grab our bead, slide that on there. And one, two, three, four, five, and one more bead, I think. And I'm going to put this tray away before I spill it, <laughs> because it was curiously perched on the edge of my work surface. I don't know how many times I've spilled that tree of beads, and Randy always comes to my rescue. <laughs> like, one time I was sitting on the floor, I, I could you know, I was sitting on the floor crying, and he just came over and he was like, he patted me on the back and he was like, honey, I've got this. You go, like, take a nap or something, and I was like, thank you. <laughs> Two, three, four, five. Okay, so now we can bring this off to the side because again, I just wanted something that would wrap across the top there that we could then bring down again to further stabilize this trilobite fossil in where it's going to go. And so with that in mind, bringing it around to the back now brings me in line with these two 18 gauge hematite wires. I'm going to take the centermost one and I'm going to go ahead and coil around it a couple of times just to stabilize. One, two, three, four, five. So there we go. So now that's stabilized in there just a little more. And it's with things like this, it does start to get to be every little bit that we can do is that much better. Now I'm going to take these wires that were coiled around the top here, and I'm going to kind of feed them through. We've got a little hole in the shoulder here. So I'm going to feed them just right through like that. And I'd like to compact that down just a little bit more. There we go. Hmm. So from here, I'm going to take this piece and bring it around and 
spiral it around this other one. Kind of No, I don't like that. <laughs> you never know if you're going to like something or not until you try it, which is why we try it. And now that gave us some little bumplies. I'm just going to try to smooth them out with my fingers. Now I am going to thread through right here. So I do want a nice smooth transition. Just like that. And I'm going to trim it about a quarter of an inch past where the coiling stops. Save that because we can make a bead link from it later. And now I'm going to spiral this in into a nice little swirl. So now from here, I'm going to grab with my nylon gel pliers and deepen the spiral, like feed it in on itself. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> so, ah, this is starting to come together, you guys. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wrong pliers. <laughs> Okay, I am loving this, you guys. Oh my gosh, like, it's amazing how stuff will start to just, like, piece and assemble together. Okay, so, what are we going to do with this one? Ooh, tangled mess of wire. Bring that off to the side. Now, I want to keep this as nice and smushed up against there as possible. And this wire just seems to kind of naturally be leading itself to the back. Just like that. So let's see what it's doing back there. So this might be a really good opportunity to just follow the flow along this bottom edge is an idea. I actually think I'm going to take this bottom edge and push it up so it mirrors the front. And then this wire here can come around. I'm going to deepen it just a little. Yeah, just come around like that. And I'm going to feed it in between these two wires right here if I can. I didn't hurt to try. Again, trying to be real gentle with my gemstone. I'm actually going to get in there with my fingers and open up that back just a little bit more. That gives me just enough room to be able to do what I'm trying to do without putting any kind of pressure on our trilobite. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to smush that back down. And I'm going to do a bend about right there. And I can use this down here now to kind of feed around because I want to continue a nice um, curve. Like I don't want the bottom to just look chopped off and I don't want all of what's happening here to be happening up at the top either. So that's where kind of spiraling around here is going to start um, taking place. So maybe if there's a way to... Sorry, I don't mean to go off camera. Hmm. I'm 
to see if will that fit? No. Jacked. Okay. So my six mil these six millimeter hematite won't fit, but let me see if I don't have some other six millimeter hematite that will. Um, if I were making two, what would I do? One, what did you do? <laughs> there they are. So now I have some different six millimeter and four millimeter beads. Yeah, these ones have much larger holes. Okay. So let's see if I can't do a, I've got one more eight millimeter in here too. I'm gonna grab that out just in case it looks good with it. Two, three, four, and I'm gonna grab a couple of these four millimeter. I'm gonna try to find the ones with the biggest holes. I'm having a lot of fun making this piece, you guys. Like, this has been a fantastic way to start my day. Okay, so I'm keeping this as fed up onto right there as I can. So let's see how this 8mm that won't fit on my wire. So never mind on that one. Um, so let's go straight to a six millimeter if that does fit. Excellent. Okay, so I'm gonna just wrap this coil around. Can you stay in there, bead. <laughs> okay. And now I'm gonna do another six millimeter bead. I really hope she likes this, because I'm going to be devastated if I have to take it apart. <laughs> now I'm going to see if I can fit a 4 millimeter. Yay! I can. Excellent. I'm just kind of wrapping this coiled wire around, Let's see if it can fit on where you fit. Maybe? No. Okay. Next bead. Nope. Eep. Why are you no fit bead? Don't tell me that was a fluke and I got the one four millimeter bead that actually fit. Okay, so I'm whipping my tray back out. I'm gonna try really hard to not spill it everywhere, but you look like you have a big one. Nope. And this is where part of the struggle comes in, guys. Nope. Blasted. Blast ended screw. Ugh. Aha! <laughs> So I'm going to fit this bead down nice and snug and just keep coiling around it. And I'm going to try to do one more 4mm bead, I do think. Okay, 
this wire, so I'm going to keep it tucked out of the way. And then this one, I'm just going to kind of feed around, I guess. <laughs> like, and so there it follows up to the bottom. And so from here, I am going to take this one and feed through the side right here where we've got a little bit of space. Pretty pleased with how that's coming along. Hmm. Should I have the spiral growing up? Or should I have like a little wonky... Well, it looks like it's growing into a little wonky, wiggly, blue thing. What was that noise? What kind of bird was that? So now I'm going to snip again about a quarter of an inch away from where the coiling stops. It gives me enough space to hold on in my pliers, but not so much that it looks like some oddly, unintentionally naked wire. And I'm just going to spiral down. Then whenever it gets nice and spread like that, I'm going to come in with my nylon jaw pliers and squeeze and just keep cinching it in. Now from there I'm gonna crack down. Yeah, I like that, you guys. <laughs> mm. You can see it's starting to really take its toll on my thumbnail. And I've got my blister and just, ah, that's why you're wrapping for you, though. Hmm. Let's see. I think I'm going to keep spiraling. Actually, before I do anything with these two, I want to bring this one around. And this one. It's a nice little naked wire. Because I, I don't want this one naked wire in the front to just look out of place, you know? Um, so I'm going to make a little spiral with it. Because a lot of getting a piece to look cohesive is having repeated themes, you know, but I just don't like the naked wire on this one, so I'm going to take it and I'm going to coil it in on itself just a little bit more, and I'm going to feed it through right there. That way it's still structurally contributing to the piece. But it's not, like, getting in the way at all. So now I'm going to snip this one right there. Spiral that in. Cinch it in just a little bit more. I think I'm going to need to go through and do some like grounding wires on those ones, but we'll see. Now with this one here, this back wire that's coming through, I actually think I'm going to feed it up in between right there. Keep everything all grounded. I don't really know of a way that I could tuck that out of the way and get this to come down. To maybe show off a little bit more of the stone. I'm going to see if I can't tuck this one behind the piece. It's never too late to change your mind, everybody. I do it literally 
all the time. Like, every time. <laughs> Here we've got it behind the stone. Ah, I'm gonna see if I can't get in there with my needle or round nose pliers and kind of just bend it up out of the way. Boom, there we go. Okay, now let's see. This one's gonna get coiled, but I just wanna see if I can kind of bring it back down. Just like that. I want it a little straighter. I want to keep that bail in line with the uh, spine. So keep everything nice and straight still. Okay. I'm going to use this wire across the back real quick to stabilize just a little further um, because I don't want to risk the stone popping out through the back. And I'm looking at it and it seems pretty, pretty stable, but just in case, I'm going to feed up from below. And I'm going to snip and just coil, splat, spiral, swirl that in. Sorry. I think today's going to be a two cup of coffee kind of day. It does feel that way. Because <laughs> this first one is not getting me where I need to be. <laughs> okay. Tightening that down just a bit. Okay. So at, le at least we have that on the back now. So we have these guys right here, and I'm wondering if I shouldn't do something with them. Or if I should just leave the piece as is. It looks a little too airy right here. For as dense as this side is, this side looks pretty airy. So I think what I might do, everybody, is come through right here and have another wire leading through from the back. That'll get coiled. And then from this one right here, have it feed through right here from the back. And that will get coiled. And so I'm going to come down with this 26 gauge wire. And this is what I'm going to use to stitch on some of these spirals. I'm just going to feed through the back. Try my best to not get any kinks in the wire. And then just feed it right on back down through. Up and around like that. I'm just going to pull it down until it's nice and tight. There we go. And now that's stabilized. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I feel like this part could be, could do to be a little bit more stable. 
So always, always use your own judgment. Um, if you feel like, you know, it really doesn't need that extra step, then don't do it. If you feel like, man, it really needs an extra step, then go for it. You know, it, it's your piece of artwork, so make it however you feel you would like to. I mean, it's, I don't think I'll ever be able to emphasize enough, um, that, uh, there's no right or wrong way of how to do any of this stuff. So just do what inspires you, and that's right. I try really hard to not get tangled on all these wires. Yes, I use my mouth as a as a tool. I'll like I'll spray it with Lysol or something first. I'm sorry if I'm getting slobber all over your piece, Patricia. <laughs> okay, so there it is, very stabilized now. And now we can actually come on through. And, oh, sorry. Yeah, to, just so you guys know, this is where I wire wrap the most. So every time I'm kind of wandering off screen, it's because I'm getting, like, really into it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to feed through to the front now. I'm trying to line up with this wire here. This one's kind of out of the way. And I'm going to start coiling. And so I'm going to coil this one and these two, and then I'll meet you all right back here. Okay, so I have the last three bits of wire coiled at three different lengths. Um, I'm going to start with the longest one, because this one I kind of intended as like a cap spiral, if that makes sense. Um, and so with this one, I kind of wanted to come around and encapsulate these other, like the other side of the, uh, of the hematite beads. Kind of feel these ones can be coiled. So, and then I'm going to feed up to three can be coiled here. If I can. To do a nice little spiral. So I'm going to snip it with a little over a quarter of an inch. Grab my round nose pliers. This is so exciting though, like this is the part of jewelry making that I'm addicted to, is just seeing how, how it comes out. <laughs> so what's going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> like whenever I started making this pendant, I did not have any more of a clue of how it was going to look than what y'all did. <laughs> keeps it fun for sure. Now I'd like to continue this squiggly pattern off the bottom here. So I'm going to squiggle. I wish I had something profound to say about knowing when to squiggle and when to spiral, but I'm just making it up. <laughs> so, uh, just do whatever feels right. And now, I'm just going to finish. 
finish this one up because this one's rather a little fiery. There we go. I hope this doesn't ruin it, but I am going to come in and add just a little bit. No, I think that's going to be fine. Of movement to this one wire. That was just a little too straight for my liking. There we go. <laughs> so, um, was I not recording? I'm still happy with how the piece turned out, but hopefully y'all got a good enough of idea of what was going off of this camera because that one was not recording. Uh, oh, <laughs> darn it. <laughs> so, here we go. <laughs> well, it's a good thing I'm not a professional camera person. Um, because <laughs> I'm much better at wire wrapping than I am at manning a camera. But this is how it came out, you guys. And I have to say, I'm very pleased. I really hope the client is as well. I'm going to take some pictures. And, ooh, I just had an idea. Yep, I like that better. So I just took that spiral right there and flipped it up. <laughs> a piece is always evolving so there you go <laughs> but it gave it a much more kind of closed look right there so but I hope that this tutorial was helpful to y'all um, if you have any questions comments or ideas I would love to hear from you guys um, if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them as well as participate in our um, bi-monthly fairy house giveaways, VIP exclusive, um, Patreon stuff, like all sorts of things. Please check us out uh, at Patreon. There's a link down in the com video description below. I'm still just out of my mind that I didn't record that last part. Oh. <laughs> oh well, I guess. At least we got hopefully most of it on camera. So. <laughs> but yeah, check us out on Patreon. I really appreciate all of your support and comments and encouragement and ideas um so yeah thanks you guys and have a fantastic day Mwah. bye <laughs>